Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you the books I hauled. Book haul. So, first, let's see what we got here. We have a book of poetry, The Before Life by Franz Wright. Um, I don't know a whole lot about this other than when I was talking to uh, Matthew Buckley Smith um, it might have been on my podcast he read my book The End of Everything and when he was thinking about the like not panic but like the high stakes that every poem seemed to have it reminded him of this. Um, and he's like, have you ever read that? Like, um, he actually just asked if I've ever read um, Franz Wright. And um, I was like, no. And he's like, okay, like, the before life is probably the one that you would, like, dig the most kind of thing. So um, I got this, so I'm going to see what it's like. Then I've been looking at this book for a while now. Um, and I was always like, how is it a book? I don't get it. But, um, this, uh, bibliography of the published work of Douglas Blazik, even though I say Blazik all the time, from 61 to 01. Here's the thing. This book is, like, really ugly and put together poorly, like, cover-wise. But this book was not meant to be a pretty book. This book was meant as it says in here, for academics, for book collectors, for booksellers. Like, this is like no frills, okay? Now, apparently, this guy, James Denbor, who I should probably try to contact, he spent, like, all fall it with Blazik was on his driveway going through boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff. Um, and then when winter came, they went inside with the boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff. The way they put it together. So there is the um, a note on the method and then the introduction. But then the first part of the book is books, broadsides, and other publications. The next one is contributions to books and other publications. The third is books in periodicals edited and published, and then periodical appearances, and then ephemera. So this seems really in depth. And like, if you look at it, it's like all categorizing stuff by year and things like that. It, it's not like a, like a, ooh, I can't wait to sink my teeth into this book. But it's it looks like it's going to be exactly what I wanted. Like a kind of exhaustive look at especially his early work from 1961, um, probably up to like 1978. That's like the sweet spot for me with him. So I want to like see everything there is and then you know, do what I can to pick it all up. So that's awesome. Uh, and then finally, this book, again, not the prettiest book in the world, but I am very excited about this. And this is something that I've been like going, God, I wish there was just something like this so I could like, you know, get my hands on and figure it out. Um, apparently this was put out in 1984. Um, but here we are. Green Isle in the Sea. Look at that cover. That is some artwork. Huh? 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 Let's look at the art on the back cover. Oh, yeah. Look at that. All right. This is an informal history of the alternative press from 1960 to 1985. Oh, maybe this came out in 85 or 86, actually. I honestly... I, I don't know. There might be like an actual good reason why this book is called this. But um, this title is going to be the reason why it took me 
I don't know, five years to find out that this book even existed. But um, it's an informal history of the alternative press. First-person narrative accounts from the editors of the leading American lit mags and small presses of the past quarter century beginning in the seminal 60s. The editors and writers included are Richard Richard Morris from Camel's Coming, Robert Fox from Carpenter Press, Carol Burge from Center, Robert Wilson from December, Len Fulton from Dust Books, Gordon Lish from Genesis West, Hugh Fox from Ghost Dance, Norman Moser from Illuminations, Um, Gordon Weaver from the Mississippi Review, C.W. Truesdale from New Rivers Press, Douglas Blazik of El Ole, uh, George Plimpton from Paris Review, um, E.V. Griffith from Poetry Now, that, that's one I'm actually looking forward to reading, um, Dwayne Locke from Poetry Review, Morris Edelson from Coyote, another one I'm really looking forward to. There's there's a few in here. Um, Merritt Clifton from Samizdat, Samizdat, A.D. Wyans from Second Coming, um, Alta Shameless, oh wait, Alta from Shameless Hussy Press, John Milton from South Dakota Review, Morty Schuyler from The Spirit That Moves Us Press, John Bennett from Vagabond, John Crawford from West End Press, Marvin Malone from Wormwood, and Diane Crunchkoff from Zaheer. And I think Diane Crunch oh Crunch Cow, sorry. Man, my eyesight is so bad. Um, yeah, she's one of the writers of this book. Um, I was real, and maybe they'll talk about it because I don't know when. Um, everyone like I don't know the lifespans of everybody but like I was really hoping that they would talk to whoever put together Trace since Trace was like the um, magazine or little magazine that chronicled all of these um, littles and stuff like that I was hoping that they would have um, I think he was dead but uh, Gypsy Lou Webb from Lujan Press, I was hoping they would have got her in here. But she, she might have been dead by that point. I don't know. So there were just a couple of people that I was really crossing my fingers for. But it looks like this is still really good. So this is going to kill my eyes, obviously. Like, hey, like paragraphs are silly. Let's just block text this you know like i just hope it's kind of well written but you know there's pictures of the people um there's pictures of the oh hearse yeah dude evie griffith you know kind of a big deal <laughs> all right god these books are so dusty there's blazik oh he's smoking a pipe dude come on yeah there's just Oh, dude, this book has so much information, I'm hoping. Because this whole thing could come crashing down. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm super excited. Like, I've been looking for a book on this forever. Um, oh, small press review. Let me see, a quarterly review of small press publications. Yeah. Um... So maybe they're going to talk to somebody who was a part of that. I don't know. That's a great picture. What's the sign say? Carpenter Press. That's funny. It's a dude on it. He's sitting in a chair, got a typewriter on top of a bunch of cinder blocks. And he's just out in a field. That's, that's classic. Okay. Well, anyway. 
So, regardless of who did, who did the art on this? Because surely cover drawings by Montana Morrison. All right. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to read this, but it's going to take me forever. Oh, dude, they have the title page of the first issue of Poetry from 1912. Look at that. I got some Ezra Pound in there. Well, no, I'm just, I'm so excited about this book. So anyway, um, that is what I got. And, oh, my poor eyes. This is, this is going to be a rough week, guys. I'm just going to come right out and say it. This is going to be a rough one. But I'm excited, so let's see how it goes. So read hard, type hard, keep buying my books. Your mom needs you, and I'll talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.